air driver functionality of the system agent that was located on the same piece of silicon as the CPU, told by multiple anonymous sources at Computex, has now been moved off the CPU. There is something seriously wrong with 12th and 13th gen from Intel, and it's not the thread director which was heavily updated in collaboration with Intel themselves. All right, guys, so I wanted to make this video for a while now, but I kind of needed to get a little bit more evidence on the problem. I feel like I'm pulling my hair out a little bit, to be honest, and I'm going to explain what's going on, and I'm going to use a few clips from a friend of the channel, Tech Yes City. He's a huge YouTube channel. He's way bigger than me, but I actually talked to him quite a bit, and we've come to find out that the Intel 12th, 13th, and probably 14th gen CPUs all have a massive problem that everyone seems to be looking past. So before I go too deep into what's going on, I just want to explain how I found this problem and then kind of go from there and explain my conversations with Tech yes City Brian and uh, what we discovered and he has discovered. I'm going to give him most of the credit because he actually went to Computex this year and had some talks on the floor with uh, engineers and came up with some pretty interesting information. So for starters, this is what I used to own. This is a Ryzen 9 3950X 16 core processor. And I went to the newer Core i7 13700K, which I did that simply because I bought a 4090 and the 4090 needed some more performance for gaming. But the one thing that I noticed since I've swapped over to this other than motherboard issues was the latency. So what I mean by latency is the input delay on doing tasks on the desktop. Uh, this does not happen during gaming. This is only during desktop use case scenarios like using an editor or YouTube or even searching files, dragging, dropping, etc. So this is something that would not happen on the Ryzen 9 3950X. I would always have a smooth experience and the 13700K is way different. And I'm gonna show you real quick, um, we're gonna open up Microsoft Office and just move the mouse around. And there's these little animated tiles. And what happens is the mouse will start to stutter and eventually um, it'll catch back up and it'll be fine. And I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna switch cameras here and do it again, just so you can see. Uh, OBS doesn't pick it up too well, but let's do it one more time. And you're going to see a lot of stuttering on the mouse. It's like jumping all over and then it fixes itself. So I'm going to show you guys a pretty good example of what I mean by stuttering in normal tasks. So before when I would grab DaVinci and drag it to a different window like so, it would be fine. And right now it seems to be OK. But as you can see, it's already starting to stutter quite a bit. And this is not something that I would experience ever before. Everything would be pretty smooth, especially considering nothing is running in the background right now. It's only DaVinci and OBS. And these two things can run seamlessly on a crazy processor like the 13700K. Yeah, I know it's only an i7, but it's seriously a decent processor. And this latency thing, I mean, look at how terrible it's doing. And if you go and open up some files, see, I just almost clicked right there in office because the latency was so bad. It'll start kind of translating. <laughs> All these little issues will start happening everywhere and you'll go to be doing something very simple and you'll have all these stutters and it's just it's so infuriating so i'm not sure if you guys have watched any of my older videos uh in this video my western digital sn 850 had also been going bad simultaneously i had bad motherboard problems i got the worst upgrade luck i think i've ever had in 15 years of doing this stuff and uh here's an example of what happened to the uh ssd i actually re-recorded this little section a couple of times trying to get it to do it but it has not done it so I can't promise that it will work or go bad on screen. Ooh. So right there, um, that SSD is pretty much going bad. It jumps up temperatures like crazy. The health status will change randomly. But after replacing the SSD and changing everything, I still noticed the stutters. And I even went as far to bring over a friend of mine's PC, which is actually right here. It's this uh, EV, uh, EVA PC by Asus, and his computer actually did the same thing. It would be stuttery on my screen. I even tried different screens, and I was like, what is going on with this newer platform? It must be the E cores, um, you know, turning off and on, or, or like, you remember those older V8s that ha half the cylinders would turn off mid-use and drive, you could drive around, I think it was like Chrysler 
Chrysler. They would have it like turn into four cylinder mode. So I kind of thought that that's what was going on. So here's the slide coming from Brian Techia City's video. And what he's explaining here is the IOH on the X58 platform was actually located on the motherboard itself. So it's not on the processor, it's on the board. In turn, you could overclock this and make the board or overall experience a little bit snappier. That actually changed when they jumped to the second gen i7, which is the Sandy Bridge architecture, and they put the IOH on the silicone itself, which improved latency and made the overall experience really snappy and a lot faster. And that was one reason why Sandy Bridge to this day is so legendary. But according to Brian, when he went to Computex this year, he talked to a bunch of engineers and a lot of people had a ton to say, complaining about boards and CPUs. And uh, he was actually one of the first people to also leak that 14th gen was going to be actually on the Z790 platform, and it's basically a refresh. So saying that, um, he had talks with these people, and they confirmed that essentially they had moved the IOH controller back onto the board, just like the old school X58 platform. Let's watch a little bit of this video real quick, and uh, then we'll discuss. And a forewarning, this may not be a problem for the majority of people. I am just quite the latency enthusiast here at Tech Yes City and delving into the topic on numerous occasions in the past has led me to even ditch higher core count newer CPUs in favor of older, lower core count Xeons, for example, and getting a better experience, at least for what I do, in the process. Though back to the topic at hand, the backstory here displays a trend that took place in the CPU industry. That is, in order for performance to become greater, latency being such metric, silicon had to move closer to the CPU and use better silicon all around not just on the CPU itself. And here is where with the introduction of 12th and now 13th gen Intel CPUs, something has reversed, especially for the first time in Intel's history of making CPUs. That IO driver functionality of the system agent that was located on the same piece of silicon as the CPU has now, and I was told by multiple anonymous sources at Computex, has now been moved off the CPU. And this is directly responsible for issues on Windows 10 and 11 when using an i9-12900K, for example, and performing even simple tasks as, for instance, searching for an MP3 file or an MP4 movie file, or even dragging and dropping files between different programs, I initially, I thought this latency issue or this slowdown of performance was due to the E cores. And if you guys didn't know, on 12th and 13th gen, Intel has hybridized the classical Intel ring bus, AKA the P cores, and merged them with E cores, which came from the mesh architecture. A recent example of this too would be making my kids some practice Pokemon cards and even Microsoft Word for instance just bugged out. There is something seriously wrong with 12th and 13th gen from Intel and it's not the thread director which was heavily updated in collaboration with Intel themselves. And I thought before going to Taiwan that maybe this was all in my head, perhaps I was crazy. I mean, my wife certainly likes to think I'm crazy, so this could just be another one of those things. The two to three second delays on searching, the, the bugs incurred when dragging and dropping files, it was all just a figure of my imagination until finally on that showroom floor at Computex, I got answers from multiple people saying, no, it wasn't in your head and it's actually a problem. And it has to do once again with the IO driver being moved directly off the CPU. So one of the main reasons I thought my 3950X felt snappier than my 13700K is because the design, they actually used Infinity Fabric to tie the IOH into the chip itself, whereas the 13700K, like we had said, is located on the board. There's much more latency between those two things. And the reason why the 10900K feels the best out of all of them is simply because it's on the die itself. So like I was saying earlier, if you're just using your computer for gaming, you probably won't notice this. And if you're looking at the raw numbers, such as Cinebench scores, or anything related to actual performance metrics, you're gonna see much higher numbers on the newer processors. During the recording of this video, Tech yes City actually launched a second video going way more in depth, explaining exactly what's going on. Here's an example of Latency Mon, which is a benchmark tool to tell you how latency works on your computer. And uh, as you can see here, the 13900K is quite a bit slower than the 10850K. And again, you can see right here, he's just doing some basic transferring of music files. And you can see that the 10850K is just walking all over the 13900K. 
Again, I will leave his video linked down below. Please check out his video. It is way more in depth and he just does a way better job at explaining everything that you need to know. So according to all the new information we have about 14th gen, it's pretty much just going to be a refresh of 12th and 13th gen, which isn't bad. But if they don't fix these latency problems, I would not recommend this to a professional user, somebody doing video editing or other tasks that are not gaming related. Gaming performance is awesome. 12th gen, 13th gen, both of them are kick ass. They perform amazing. But when it comes to these simple tasks, I have yet to find a scenario where the newer processors are better than the older 10th gen and 11th gen processors. As shown by all the benchmarks and information, they're actually worse. So what do you guys think? Have you guys had problems with this? Have you noticed it? I thought I was going crazy, but when I was talking to Brian, uh, he confirmed that I'm not. There are posts on Reddit about it, and there are a lot of people that will argue this topic as well and say that you're just seeing it. It's a placebo effect. I can tell you that it's definitely not a placebo effect. This has definitely been really hard to deal with because I feel like my computer is slower than my 2019 Ryzen 3950X. One thing that's tough about this whole thing is that Intel has always had the edge over Ryzen when it comes to Adobe, DaVinci, or any of the recording professional software. Um, that is starting to change. Ryzen 7000 has been a ton better. And I think that going forward, I might even suggest that until Intel fixes this problem. Anyways, guys, that's going to do it for this video. If you liked the video, please like the video. Check out Tech Yes's stuff. It's amazing. His channel is so good. And I will see you guys next time. Peace.